Here we're going to be looking at a zero interest bearing note here. Now a zero interest bearing note is not going to have any stated rate of interest or any interest payments on this note here. And again this note is not issued at its face value here. So a zero interest bearing note, both its present value and the cash paid to the issuer and its future amount are known and therefore the interest rate or the implicit interest rate can be calculated here. And for example that we're going to look at here, Corporation A lends Corporation B $10,000 in cash in exchange for a $10,000 three-year zero interest bearing note. There's no interest on this note here. And it, with its uh, present value here is going to be $7,721 and that's based on the implicit or implied interest rate here. So let's go out and see how we'd calculate this interest rate. Well we know what its present value is here. $7,721 here and we know that its maturity value here at the end of three years is $10,000. So we could put this into our calculator here and using an internal rate of return function we'll determine that it's a 9% here interest rate on this uh, zero interest bearing um, bearing note here. So uh, the present value here is $7,721 with the maturity of $10,000 here equates to a 9% interest uh, rate on this note here. And you can check that here using our present value function as well. Um, the $10,000 amount here discounted back three years here at 9% and that's at the beginning of the period in this case uh, equates to $7,721 which uh, is our present value here that we have on this zero interest note. So next thing we have to do is we have to amortize uh, this note here using the effective interest method. And again we uh, calculated that interest rate here, the implicit interest rate to be 9%. So looking at our amortization schedule, again we use this effective interest method. Uh, our cash received here, well we don't have any cash payments received on this note because it's a zero interest or it's a zero uh, interest bearing note here. But we do have some interest revenue that we're going to be calculating here and also our discount that we have to amortize on this note because the note was so uh, received here at $7,721 and its maturity value is $10,000. So there's a discount here, uh, the difference here between the $7,721 and the $10,000 and we're going to determine that to be $2,278. So how do we go and we uh, use uh, set up our amortization here? So we take the present value here at $7,721, that it's, it's carrying value here and we have to amortize it up here to $10,000. So you take Take the uh, beginning carrying value here of $7,721 times 9% interest rate gives us an interest revenue for the for the end of year one here at $695. Now our discount that we ha are amortizing here, we would since there is no cash payment here received, it, it the total discount here is the interest revenue that we have calculated here. So we take the discount that we've amortized here, add it to the beginning carrying value of $7,721 and we come up with a new carrying value here at $8,417. Now we're just taking the 8417 times our 9% interest, again we're going to get our interest revenue for the period here of $757 which equates here to the discount that we're amortizing here. So just again add the 757 to the beginning carrying value here and you come up with a new carrying value and just carry out your amortization here using that 9% interest rate. So what we've summarized, what to summarize our amortization schedule here, our cash received since there's a zero interest uh, on this note here, there's zero cash received, but we have interest revenue that we're going to recognize based on that amortization here of $2,278 plus then our amortization amount here. So let's go over and look at how we'd record this here. Now for our cash account, uh, for our notes receivable here, we would credit it here, uh, reduce it, because, uh, looking at from the Corporation A, the lender's perspective here, by the present value of that zero interest note here uh, by $7,721. And then we'd recognize a notes receivable here, debited here for $10,000. Now, since we have a discount on this notes receivable here, uh, we set up this contra account or a discount to our notes receivable. It's a contra account. It reduces our notes receivable here. So we would credit it for the 
total discount on this note here, the difference between its face value and its present value here at the beginning of the note, uh, 2278. And then we amortize or we decrease or we reduce our discount on our amortization here based on our amortization schedule until we get our full, am full amount here, our discount here of 2278, which uh, cancels out our beginning balance here. And then we also recognize interest revenue here on this note. So we would credit our interest revenue based on our, our amortization schedule here up to the total amount here of 2278 at the end of the third year. And then when we uh, this note here matures we would credit out our notes receivable here, take it off our books here, and we would debit or increase our cash account here by $10,000. So just going back to our amortization schedule to review it again here. With this zero interest bearing note here, uh, we have no interest payments on this note here. So uh, there is a zero here received or paid on the note. And then we would we amortize our note here, discount it, uh, starting or amortize it up from the discounted amount or its present value here for 7721 up to its um, maturity value of $10,000. And then we uh, that amortization here um, determines the interest revenue that we have to uh, recognize on this note. So that summarizes how a uh, zero interest bearing note would be amortized and recorded here on our balance sheet and on our income statement.